Hello, hello, welcome back. And I'm gonna again fidget with this wonderful seating area. <laughs> this is so creative, it's like, <laughs> she's got the legs. For I'm this. trying, I'm working it, I'm just <laughs> sprawled out here. But welcome back to Carla Don Live. Sorry, we're doing a second take here, so welcome back to Carla Don Live. I'm Carla Gordy Bristol. I'm here with my guest, Jackie Jordan. Welcome, Jackie Jordan. Thank you for having me here, Carla. I'm so glad to have you here. We're going to have lots of fun today. Jackie is the CEO of TV Guestbert. We're here at the wonderful Guestbert location. She's been nominated for two daytime Emmys. She's a TV producer, author, media consultant, and New York Times best-selling publisher, and more. Don't you just love that part of everything and we more. do? Thank you. And more. There's so much more. We can't even get it all in. We've got about a good 30 minutes to talk Thank about you. a lot on publishing a book. So anyone out there who's had an interest in publishing a book, who is starting a book already, who has We maybe, love authors. You love authors. So this is the place if you're an author, you're looking to write a book, um, or just want to know how to go about the process. It's yeah. just some people, well, I Well, there's think, a lot of options. It's yeah. a lot of confusion, too. When there's a lot of choices, there's a lot of confusion. See, and so. you can help kind yeah. of give a few tips, you yeah. know. We'll give a few tips to kind of guide you through a little bit of yes. that. And um, we're here on this. We're, tr we're bringing lots of joy with this wonderful sparkly top she's wearing because we're, we're here in the rain in Los Angeles. We've got the rain. Yeah, we have the rain. And uh, people have been evacuated where there were a lot of fires because of the mudslides. And, um, but you say you love the rain. I do love the rain. Um, after all months of California burning, I'm really happy to see the rain. Yeah. And I also feel like it, it enlivens the spring. You know, yeah. we'll have real flowers, we'll have, right. we'll have a bloom. Well, yesterday was the first day yeah. of spring, so, yeah. we, you know, it's just, it rained. It's hard on the to have seasons here in California. It is, yeah, and it rained on the first day of spring, so yeah. I don't know if that's the way to welcome it or I not. It's you, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wonderful. That you thought was a great start, yeah. <laughs> well, like you said, that day, to get the flowers blooming, we got to have the rain, so maybe that was, that's the process. But we do, I send my prayers out to all those in the areas with the mudslide mm. thread and that have been evacuated. I recommend they do what the... Officials Absolutely. are telling them to Absolutely. do because a lot of people want to stay home. It's going to be a good three days yeah. of some heavy rain. So, but it just the air smells good, <gasps> doesn't you it? You could say that, yeah. The, it, yeah. All the, the LA smog kind of yeah. dissipates it's a little bit. It's really gorgeous. You know, it's fresh. It yeah, feels it feels fresh. very fresh and clean because it's natural. We're supposed yeah. to have it. So, and we have a great view of Playa Vista. It is a beautiful view. We see the clouds and the sky. It's just really a nice location. And then here's the, it's just funny about the location, but we're upstairs from Facebook. Oh, Facebook is below us. they don't us. want you to know that. Hey. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't say that. You don't know where we are. <laughs> they don't want you to know. It's not, but the, they know main, where you it's are. not the main Facebook. It's just like a little operation. <laughs> right. <laughs> just a little office. So we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> and we're on Facebook Live. So hey, go figure. There you go. So I want to send a shout out to my cousin Bianca Lawson. Happy birthday, Bianca. I love you so much. It's my younger cousin, who I always say is my little cousin. But as she gets older and I get older, I can't keep saying little much longer, I guess, huh? Or no. can I? I, I know. Think so. I still want to keep calling her my little cousin, but she's having so much success. Her whole career, she's an actress. If you guys don't know, I, then where have you been? Because she's been in many shows from her, you know, teenage years on, and she's currently on Queen Sugar, killing it, killing That's the awesome. game. Yeah, That's killing awesome. the game over there with Oprah and Ava DuVernay. So, mwah, have a fantastic day, darling. All right. So let's see. We're going to talk a little stories before we get into the author. We're going to talk about writing a book and all soon, but. We're going to get into a few little stories. You. you can join in. I got the right person to do this with Thank me. Thank you. Yeah, right? love it. Love okay, it. so let's engage together. Make sure the door's open. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> we've, got, we've got Peep around set here. We've got Peep. So um, oh, that was my first. Oh, you know, we had the bomber su suspect in Austin, Texas. Yes. They hate to say they caught him, but he killed. He blew himself up. Yeah. He's been killing people. He's killed two people yeah. over the past three weeks. And then he sent packages through FedEx. Did you yeah. hear the most recent what happened? The SWAT team came out and... Yeah. It, yeah, I, mean, we, I feel like we have a lot of very angry, confused, yeah. especially men, young men. Yeah, very angry, very yeah, confused. Yeah, he's only like 23, 24 yeah. years old. I'm, yeah. You know, what is it that drives these people to do such things? Yeah. It's just very sad. Yeah, I mean, because if, you know, you act violence out towards others, it's obviously there's your... I mean, you would be violent towards yourself anyway. Right. And that just feels like hate and self-hate, self-anger. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, you know, and it's been going on for so many years. It's like, what is really being done to get a handle on this? I just think there's so many things that we can do. The programs need to be initiated through the government to really, you know, go into the schools. 
because you know that's yeah yeah I mean cool. I worked in news at the time Columbine had happened and oh it was really goodness. like the f you know was that was the first of these yeah you know, that was the big awakening yeah, that exactly. oh my gosh this this can happen yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I love the fact that kids are speaking up now in the schools, though, and they're sounding so intellectual yeah. and mature and delivering their message. But it passion. just breaks my heart that mm -hmm. these kids even have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, because we had, um, we had in my high school, we had, you know, one teenage pregnancy, one suicide, and one murder. Mm. And it was it devastated the my whole community the, the to have those things. Right. Um, maybe because we didn't have all of this to broadcast it out it wasn't it was just right. it stayed within the grief yeah you can't keep anything community. secret yeah. yeah so i think also that you know some of these things aren't new and significant just to teenagers necessarily but because we all can see it i mean the shootings are with the oh with it's the, horrific, crazy yeah. um but there's definitely been an acceleration of, of violence and you know also I'm watching just all these young guys play, boys play video games, violent video games, and I'm not yes. blaming it on that, but there's just... It's there's not just, a positive thing. It's just thing. different. Things yeah. are just very different than... Um, than when we were yeah. growing up. Yeah. yeah. So the violence yeah. is, wow, it's frightening. Yeah, there's more, I think, more negative games and activities mm -hmm. than there are positive, mm -hmm. possibly. Oh, and in the I schools, so. schools, used, someone had made a post on social media recently, and I was like, absolutely, I agree. I think it was um, Anthony Anderson from Blackish. And I it's about, I know, isn't he great? I'm a with he's, oh, you do? I he's do. so much fun. I was dancing with him at some like Image Awards party years ago, but he's just, he's a character. He's so great. But um, he, it was saying that um, back in the day, we would discipline them with paddles. You know, you'd have the little paddle sitting there and you knew, oh, I better, you know, get your hand or you'd have to go in the corner, you know, the, the cap and the dunce cap. There were just different methods. Then they took that out of the schools and said no discipline. Then they took religion out of the schools. They no took one could a lot either. of it. They yeah. really disempowered at least the, uh, the teachers. The teachers. They disempowered the teachers. They That's did. what happened. It was like we went from one extreme where the teachers were, you know, probably um, misused their power. Right. And now we're in the other extreme where they have no power. We, you can't criticize a child without it becoming a school issue. Right. And so that makes it very, you yeah. know, difficult. Yeah. I think fa pa parents have to just be proactive themselves in the home and with the friends because we always are the parent to many. Yeah. You have kids? Nope. No? Okay. So the pa parents become yeah, parents absolutely. as you have nieces or nephews or whatever. And so you have to then just kind of engage is what, what I did with mine. When they'd come around, I'd have little conversations lightly about yeah. things that I teach my kids onto their friends so just to give them things whether they're getting it or not at home I don't know. I'm witnessing my friends dealing with such concept issues mm -hmm. with their kids that were like I've never we weren't yeah. you know we didn't it, it just it just I wish it wasn't that way I you know, know. they're know. they're like the concepts that they're having to uh, discuss as you said in the home mm -hmm. are you know just beyond play and education oh, yeah. and you know, there's it's just on another a, level. It's a whole it's other <laughs> level. Whole other level. It is totally. And, and given and the work that I do at TV Guestbert is also like what we do here when we put our experts in the media. We create. We follow the narrative. Like mm -hmm. so, we respond a lot of times to the narrative, and also as change agents, sometimes we try to influence the narrative, okay. positively influence the narrative. But the narrative has been has been dire. Yeah, it's been very, it's been dire. Yeah. So, so it's more it's harder to try to pull out the positive out yeah. of that narrative. Yeah. Yeah. But what I can say mm -hmm. though, a lot of times, sometimes when a dark narrative is in play, contrast. So mm -hmm. we will have a lot more happy stories That's so because because I know even just for my personal self, like I am, I can only take so much in at this point. Like I mean, mm -hmm. we I work at I work around the news. We work around content, and there's only so much that I can take yeah. in. Sometimes so you have I, to tune it uh, out. Yeah, so yeah. I want, I'm, I'm looking for happy stuff. Yeah. I'm looking for connections mm -hmm. and meaning and purpose. And Absolutely. That's the one thing I think that's going to happen out of all of this dire yeah. news is that yeah. we're going to be craving and creating and collaborating. A happy place. A happy place. I think that's why Pharrell's song, Happy, yeah. came. Yeah. It was such an immediate yeah. hit. Yeah. And to this day, when it comes on, it just gives it people happy. that outlet of yeah. joy. It, it, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's infectious. So, yeah, we needed it. So there's an end to that. Bomber, um, you know, he ended up kept taking a few lives and injured many, but now he's gone. But hopefully they'll make a change in the future for others. Um, the, there's a research center now. There's this report on what, what is considered high class versus low class. 
and middle income. So I was going to go through some of their rankings and their figures. It's the Pew Research Center. They did this report on defining what a class is. This is in 2016. And they're really, they're saying that they're noting the middle income Americans are defined as adults whose annual household income is two thirds to double the national median. Now the national median is 59,000. So, you know, these, uh, that's the base for everything I'm going to go over, 59,000. So you take that and you double it. And then for um, those that are lower income, the households have to have less than 67% of the median, and the upper households will have incomes that are more than double the median. So, uh, you know, this is their test. I always go. People always get so caught up in what is considered upper class versus lower, what's the poor, what's, I mean, they're saying more people are technically in poverty. Well, the Los Angeles really. Times just did a story, I think, within the last month saying that California is, has one of the highest poverty rates of the entire country, and we have the Most biggest of. social progr programs. Look at that. Um, and that, you know, that our entitlements, that we, can, people can receive up to 200 entitlements from different agencies. And so even, but we're not pro-workforce um, or mm -hmm. pro-work training. I'm not saying that that's the solution or not. That's what the right. LA Times article, it, you yeah. know, highlighted. But I think it brings it goes to, to point that, yeah. this. That you yeah. that you bring up, and yeah. I don't know how, you know, know. you can't live in Los Angeles off of fifty nine thousand dollars. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. It's hard to even rent and survive. Yeah, and that's you know that that's is rent. That is a year's yeah, rent. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's you're really absolutely tough. right. So, so their breakdown of how much you have to earn each year to be considered upper income. So if you're got goals, here are your goals. <laughs> mm. <laughs> if you're not here yet, it just tells you the size of your family. So if you have one person in your family, you have to make a minimum of seventy two thousand and some change. I'm rounding them off. Um, a family of two would be 102,000. A family of uh, three would be 124. Four is 144,000. And five would be 161,000. Uh, these figures make, I'm just like, how did they do all the research? And of course, it's relative to where you live, um, your expenses, that your income level in that particular town. But it, it doesn't, if you don't fit those parameters, it doesn't mean you're, you're, you feel you'd be in the upper class. It's, it's giving you a general idea. You know, one of the um, philanthropies that I do voluntarily, mm -hmm. I don't get paid, but I mentor a lot of businesswomen, oh, uh, women starting Wonderful. businesses here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, one, it helped informed me as a business owner myself, but also, um, and I, I'm very interested in their numbers, you mm -hmm. know, so if they want to be mentored, they have to show me their numbers. Yeah. yeah, and then a lot of, you know, people don't like that because it's very personal and there's a lot of people who carry shame right. around their numbers. Right. They're not where they want to be yeah. and they're not ready to reveal that. But yeah. if you don't know what your numbers are and mm -hmm. what your you know your living expenses are and what your You gotta know. Yeah, it's really yeah. it makes it's all only of those goal things. setting. Yeah. You gotta know where it's you wanna exactly go. It. I do real estate and that's something every yep. year we do our planning. And they sit down and go, how much do you want to make this yeah. year? How are you gonna get there? What's your yeah. time frame? You have to have a check system every yep. two months, three months recheck where you are and, and of course know and what your money it. is. I do it with my kids. Know what you're spending Which is every awesome, month. Which awesome because a lot of budget, people don't do it, that. Yeah, how much are you putting out? You can't just keep spending and then realize, oh wow, I spent $5,000. But a lot of uh, families don't talk money. Oh, yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah, that's Because awesome. I, th I don't want them to make those kind of mistakes. Yeah. I want them to budget. I want them to put money aside. I want them to plan. I want them to think of what they're going to do to invest to make that money double. That's Brilliant. Because, That's you know, great. just making it is okay that you're making it. Right. And then they want to spend it. When right. you're in your 20s, what do you want to do with money? You want to spend it. And I'm like, okay, so it's been three months you've been working on a job that you didn't have. Now you have it. But how come all the money is gone? Right. You were surviving without it. Right. So. <laughs> Good mama. Good you know, mama. so Good business you know, Good you, mama. not that she listened immediately, but I'm, I, we're working on it. It's work in progress. <laughs> I always say those learning lessons are expensive. <laughs> money learning lessons are very expensive. Um, and I believe in some of the footage I've seen on you that you talk about um, getting in your own way. I don't know if that was I something, do. a program I or do. how you were we doing did, that. We did do that um, for a whole while because it became heartfelt marketing. Okay. Allowing the universe to be your uh, business partner. Got it. Was the book. It's really great. Thank I love you. the concept of Thank telling you. people this. Well, because um, what I do for a living is I essentially aggregate opportunity. You, mm -hmm. you tell me what your vision is, we break it down into the action steps, and then we aggregate the opportunity mm -hmm. to create for you. Right. And what, what I learned really on early on is that I would be working with really successful people in their specific industries, but when it came to the TV opportunities or the media opportunities that we were presenting for them, they would self-sabotage them. And it was so confusing because yeah. you're like, how can you be so successful yeah. here yeah. and you know, show up 45 minutes late to a call time for a live television appearance? Like right. That, right. That's like insane. You wouldn't right. do that on your job. Right. I know you wouldn't. Right. 
So it was really about people getting in their own way of like their growth and their opportunity. And even when um, my first book came out, Get On TV, before Heartfelt Marketing, I was on the cover of Women's World Magazine. And I do remember having the experience of feeling like a fraud. Like I felt like, oh my God, I'm going to be seen. I have no control over people, what they're going to think when yeah. they see it. And the, so I have sensitivity towards, for at least for what we do, we do for a living, about people bringing up um, their you know, insecurities. Because this is, this is out of control. Like yeah. I have no control about what people think, I've, how they're going to react. And, and so people, are, when we do, when we bring the opportunity to them, they have to confront those aspects of themselves. So when I was pre-promoting heartfelt marketing, which at the time was getting out of your own way. I see. We spoke a lot, a, a lot about that because, and so many of the policies the company ended up having to adopt mm. were specific to people's self-sabotaging mm -hmm. of their own opportunity. You know what uh, happens? Yeah, you know, it really does. And, and if you're doing it in real estate, you see it also. Oh, with, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And people so do it in the funniest, strangest ways. Yeah, and that ties into being successful. Yes. You know how 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 do you reach success? What is your level of success? What are you trying to do to get there? How do you cope with success? There's there's that process. That is part of the because people with reach success. it and they don't know how to handle That's it and exactly. what to do with it. So it's again and being prepared for that success. You yeah. have to prepare yourself and talk through it and have a coach sometimes. And you're a show business family. Yes. And you know, I work in the entertainment industry and what I have found and you can tell me if it's the same, but most most mm -hmm. real entertainment success is 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 a slow climb. Yeah. It looks like it's a overnight oh, success. Yeah. yeah. But it's always a gradient experience. Mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, I'm like, this one appearance isn't gonna make or break you. Right. It's gonna be accumulation right. of experiences yeah. that will make you successful. No, it's a process. Yeah. So it's definitely a totally. process. You gotta pay your dues. But people think it's like you, you gotta can do pay it your like dues. This. There of course we know in yeah. the industry. There are there, there are people up do pop. There are those rare situations yeah. that happen. Hallelujah to those yeah, people. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Kudos, I love it. But most of them, them, most that go up fast also come down fast. They do because they're not yeah. prepared. Yes. You know, that success they hits them and plot. it's overwhelming. They don't have the right people maybe around them or nobody. Yeah. This little young kid, I forget now, he did a movie some years ago and he said he was just walking and someone walked up to him and said, do you want to be in a movie? They took him down and he became a lead in a movie. I mean, he wasn't even thinking about acting, not even in his thought pattern. His family hadn't prepared for it or thought. Did so he the, stay in acting? I afterwards. don't know. I didn't That's follow his career. I don't think so. Got it. Yeah. I don't, because I would probably remember. Um, if you've seen him again. Yeah, but yeah. he did a good role in the movie, and he was young, maybe 10 or something, and he did this part, but it just kind of. Fell in his he lap. He did it, yeah. and he fell in his lap. It was overnight. He had no experience, but it worked, and he carried yeah. it. But I just think it could have been that crash and burn. Yeah process which happens yeah you know and you got you, you can't really be, have to be, be handle it yeah and then in anything not just entertainment whatever you want to be successful at it can uh, that same formula applies for anybody anybody watching it it, it applies so think through it you know some yeah. people just jump in one day I want to do this and just <laughs> yeah and then we even we treat we treat the whole um, uh, experience at TV Guestbert, basically, mm -hmm. we basically say that you, if you want to be in the major leagues, you have to practice. Yeah. So we do like on-camera training, we do different types of, you know, we do content development nice. so that people understand what their content is, especially right. since like, we deal with business owners and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and authors who are dealing with specific messaging. Mm -hmm. You just have to, like, you have to understand the boundaries of your conversation, where right. you want to go with, with topics so that you and if you haven't ever stopped to think about it or categorize it, it, you don't really walk out and do it. And yeah. as you know, any any performance of any level, whether speaking or singing or, or whatever, it requires rehearsal and Athletics, practice. Athletics, anything, yeah, exactly, training. Exactly. It, it's the same thing as training for the Olympics exactly. or a race. You've got to practice. You yep. have to put that time in. Know what you have to do when you hit that line and go. Exactly. When they say go, you better have a plan. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Too many people, they say go, but they're just winging yeah, it. Yeah, you don't doing walk they... into your A game. You have to practice and become your A game. Absolutely. You have to I practice love... and become your Absolutely. A game, you know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Put that up on your wall, you know? Yeah. Practice to have the A game, yeah. Um, so this kind of segues into the book writing and publishing, I think, because, you know, I want everybody to kind of think of what their success is, what they want to do, whether it be book, book writing, being an author, um, being published, which, you know, Jackie can help you with that. <laughs> so you've kind of the one-stop shop. If someone says, you know, I've been wanting, I have this idea, I want to tell my life story, or I want to talk about an experience, or I want to write children books, or they just see something in the world, happiness, whatever it may be right. they want to talk about. 
what do you do? You kind of wake up and go, God, I really want to do it. I have some thoughts. Do you start writing yourself? Do you go Great to question. someone like you? How does that work? Great question. We are one-stop shop. One, I've been a published author by uh, publishing, so I've done the traditional route. I have had the so big win. book it, literary agent, mm -hmm. done the whole book bu query blurb <laughs> piece process. Right. You know, from idea to bookshelf was four year in you know, a four year process. Oh so I've done that. I've worked with people who self published. You know, which is was why we got into publishing. Traditional mm -hmm. publishing was because there there's a the limitation to self publishing all, has to do sometimes with the national media yeah. because they're not vetted books. Yeah. And they're not been vetted, so the national media d producers don't have a chance to read every book that they get. So if it's not vetted, they don't promote it. Mm. So we started p publishing books. So there's a lot of different choices, and there's a lot of different reasons for it. Ironically, next Thursday, which is I think March 29th, we're uh, for Guestbert Publishing, which is the website. We're st we do a five-week webinar course. Mm. Um, and it's live Very nice. and uh, not live on Facebook live but it's live amongst the group and mm. we take them through while I'm taking them through writing a manuscript out mm. um, I also take them through the publishing options oh, and then the marketing options. Oh see that's another key. That's exactly. A lot and of people drop things, the ball on exactly, that. Exactly exactly and so as a company who does PR as well you know, when we have a take an author on, the worst thing an author can call a company and say to us is, "My book just came <laughs> out. Kid, I'd like to promote it." <laughs> like, ah! well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But the truth is, when we take an author on, we like to have a six-month lead time, mm -hmm. and we start promoting as the upcoming author up, which is why you have a um, you had a title of the book because we start promoting yeah, it in the process okay. of writing it, and, and that's, that's how that came, that's how I that like came that. out. Yeah, I mean it's nice. It's so it's still yeah, so getting out of your own way is what yes, I was. I just exactly. that sounds like you know everybody's getting in their own way. You're the biggest. You're your worst enemy. Somebody else had the book got the book title came out, which is why we shifted. Uh, yeah, but it's true. You're yeah. your worst enemy, as we were saying about being coming a success and being successful. Yeah. So. Back to publishing because I'm planning two books already. I have, I have at least four books that I know I want to write. Well, let me give you some so. author tips for writing. Mm -hmm. First off, I believe that writing is just a process of 10 minutes a day. Just commit to 10 minutes just of writing write a day. Just and freehand yeah. or go on the computer? How do you do it? I'm a freehand writer. Whatever makes you comfortable. Whatever makes you comfortable. Okay. And a thousand words. Okay, so, so 10 minutes will get you a thousand words. words. Yeah, 10 minutes will get you a thousand words. Okay. So for us to publish a book, uh, we a minimum of forty thousand words to seventy five thousand words okay. is our minimum. So that's really a month. That's six weeks of that's writing. Not bad. It's that's not, not bad. bad at all. Does that get digestible? Yeah, when you hear it makes it, that it way? easy. Everybody just exhaled yeah. on that, right? Yes. You just went, oh, is that it? Yeah, <laughs> ten minutes, but you have to commit to it. But it's not a big deal. It well, is that's so not key. a big deal. Did you hear that? You got to commit to it. That's exactly. that's where people mess up. Yes. So. So that's the formula. A lot of people think when they go to write a book that they're going to start with the beginning. In the beginning. And then they just sit there. They're like, I, I don't even know. Right. Ten it's minutes a day. Exactly. It doesn't matter which order it is. The book will c reveal itself to you. So just whatever thought and ideas come yeah. to you, just... Start it, yeah. We so we we do we, our company. We work um, when we ghost write for books for people, mm -hmm. or we, you know, right. we do the Google Docs. We set up the folders, mm -hmm. and then when I'm writing books for myself or for other people, I just set up folders, and I'll even throw a page up with an idea. Like I'm like, here's a great idea for a title or a chapter, mm -hmm. but I have no like, content. Or I'll start a doc, and uh, it'll be the great content just comes mm -hmm. out of me, but I have no where to put it yet. I don't even worry mm -hmm. about those things. That's mm -hmm. called editing. Just forty thousand words down, one thousand minute, one ten minutes a day, <laughs> one thousand words. It is so doable. It will. Ten minutes seems like not enough right? time. People are like ten minutes, which you know, it seems like it would take at least a couple days, of hours a day of so writing. It's so hard. Yeah. I'm like, what am I writing? This is so stupid. Nothing good. Yeah, is you coming can debate out. it in your brain yeah. for ten minutes. Yes, <laughs> and sometimes ten minutes turns into two hours, and I'm like, oh right. my god, I yeah. can't believe how much I got done. Well, that's the flow. Yeah, and once you get going, but you commit it's to it. It's hard to stop. I found. Yeah, when I start to write and you get going in it and the flow happens, it's hard to stop because yes. yes. all the ideas just flood Yes, and you become very creative. So you so, might get a good week out in a day. So let me tell you my trick to the editing process. <laughs> so I'm like, don't abandon, abandon worrying about editing when you're writing. Just put it all out just there. Just get it on paper. Okay. I, can talk, I can tell people, vomit words. Just vomit words. You've got right. nothing until you have words on a paper because if the book lives in your head, it does not exist. It's kind of like a puzzle, basically. Yes. Is that that's what it's what kind we do. of like a book puzzle? And that's how we treat editing. Yeah. So when the editing process happens, and you can find this on our like TV Guestbert Facebook page, mm -hmm. you'll find pictures of us in this space where we will print the book and lay it out, scissors and oh, wow. tape, <laughs> spread it on the floor, then we use index cards and we go through and start chunking and it say together. This should go here first, yeah. second, third, kind of. Yeah. 
I mean, if you see, ever see it. me to do it, I will do it with a step stool. And I will like literally <laughs> have a step stool and I stand over rows of content uh -huh. and I'm like, okay, that needs to go right. there. And that's how I that's And you how put I it out again. Yeah. And, well, that's your creative way. That's yes. what works for it's, you. Because I'm tangible. Everybody has their I'm way. You, it, Some people right. can actually edit on a computer. Right. Yeah. I'm probably more like you. I like, I still have an old, a calendar where I write in it. I, me too. Really? Okay. See, I like to see. I like yep. to have it there I in write my checks. face. I, yes. I need to know I paid it. I, yeah. No I like bank the copy. Thing, I like yeah. the little carbon yeah. copy. I, yeah. See? Yeah. I even like reading books. I'm not a Kindle person. <laughs> I'll do. I like reading books. I like touching. Yeah. yeah <laughs> my, my daughter's such the book reader and um, she believes in having that tangible book. She got the Kindle. It was a gift to her. Well, that's good to hear that someone She'll younger. She'll do it, but she, yeah. She's 23 me. and she does like to have a book. You're a lot younger than me. Yeah. Likes to have a book. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. No, she loves it. But But know. that's how we edit. We don't we don't we don't worry at all about the right editing when we're writing. Mm -hmm. We edit later. Yeah. And then we and then we'll write make notes like this needs to be rewritten or this needs to be answered, which right. means requires more writing. Okay. So we got a party going on in the office. Oh, we are in an open space, yeah, so there's open. anything can happen. We're live and in an open space. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we, we usually require, require a lot of training I, I, for that. I thought we said that it takes a lot of media training. <laughs> anything, as long as the rain doesn't come in on us, we're good. We can handle anything. We can handle it. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, we're doing our on-camera training course here in, in Los Angeles mm -hmm. in uh, Westwood on Saturday, March 31st. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. Okay, so, so what what is the training going to be? Um, so we, what we do, it's usually an intimate luncheon, mm -hmm. and we usually have five or six prospective experts or authors or people who have had some TV experience, and we bring in a TV producer, a booker, who's actually working on shows. Okay. Like a real working right. booker. Actually active. Yes. So we kind of go through the TV guestbert way of doing things, and then the producer talks about what makes them a good guest, and then we do a content mm -hmm. exercise that's mm -hmm. universal for everybody, but everybody's mm -hmm. like, how could I talk about this? How could I talk about this? Yeah. And the reason we do that exercise is that my point in, uh, is to show people that the um, opportunities to be on television and in the media are like endless, oh, yeah. like endless, and people don't realize that, right. and they get locked in their own point of view of their own messaging that they miss all these opportunities. So yeah. that's why we do it to open up the have to field open. of possibilities yeah, you have to be of open. content mm -hmm. and the collective narrative, and then um, we go through the drill of doing some how to how to assemble a sec. I call it the uh, anatomy of a segment. Okay, and then we I do some it. on camera training. Fun. And then the right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got that. You could. That's all you up can my alley. Be one of the trainers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's a lot of fun, though. It is. And I was just talking to. Um, there's a television station at Beverly Hills High School, which is my alma mater, and uh, we just uh, init inducted a new mayor in the city. And so there, they were. They were filming. It's called KBEV Station, and they were filming. And they do a cute thing over there. I mean, it's, it's awesome. really a nice station for uh, for a high school. And so I was talking to them after, and they were saying how much they love the show, the Beverly Hills View yeah, that I do, awesome. and they yeah, watch no, it, it and all this stuff. And I just thought it was so cute. They, they were like, we watch it, and we love it. And we're, yeah. I said, well, you guys are amazing, too. You know, but it's the young ones out there that are doing it and trying to make things happen. And you know, it goes to what you're saying. They need to take these classes. They have all these more opportunities with social media now. They can learn so much. You can just click. <laughs> we're talking this about someone and learn everything you want to know. My daughter was asking me. I said we used to have to go to the library. Yeah, we used to, have to go to the library. <laughs> we used to go to the library, get books and read. And it would take hours. One of my first uh, TV booking jobs was the Montel Williams show, mm -hmm. and you know we had pagers, phone books, a FedEx account. <laughs> That's how we p produced shows, and we had to share like yeah. one was like word processor. And we so. thought we were really happening exactly. with pagers, right? Exactly. We really were like, hey, we have pagers. We get messages now. <laughs> but Carla, you bring up a really good point, which is also unlike before once you put it out there it's really hard to take it back I mean you found yes, yes. my working book title Absolutely. on a video so which which is fine however excuse me I thought it was exactly a book, right? exactly exactly however like when you put things out there it mm -hmm. you don't take them back the it's same in way the elements it's yes there, yeah. and now things from even the past are being resurrected and used against <sighs> folks yeah or appropriately mm -hmm. so if necessary right. But we can't take anything back. So, so much mindfulness needs to go into this process. Right, right. So true. Yeah, I just, for some reason, when you said that, I thought of President Trump and Stormy. <laughs> it just popped in my head like things can come back yeah. to resurrect themselves when you think it's all gone and paid off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh you know, if it God. needs to be resurrected, it's a good thing. 
Okay, see, we've got stuff happening behind <laughs> us. Hola. She's on the TV. She's on the festival. I know, we've got live. Oh, well. <laughs> That's live TV. I see your likes and your love over there. We appreciate it. Okay. So we've gone through getting the idea to paper. We've gone through how many you know, minutes a day you need to put in. We've gone through do not edit anything. Just put it out there. Even if you think it sounds silly, mm -hmm. just put it down. Mm -hmm. So this is them, a person doing this themselves at home. Yes. What point do they then come in and say, okay, I've got it all written yeah. out. Yeah. Got all so, these things that look silly. I haven't put them together like you do on the floor. Right. Just all these things. Right. What do they do? So for if, uh, for us, where would they take it? Yeah. Call you. They can come to us at any part in the process. Mm -hmm. So some people come to us from ideas, and we actually do the writing all the way through. We put them okay. on a we put them on a schedule with us to do the writing. Mm -hmm. well, we do the writing, but so we do ghost writing. Um, but we can work at any part of the process. We just had a meeting today with somebody who actually has a book already finished, already edited, ready to go. It came to you with came that. today mm -hmm. today with that, and we literally discussed publishing options. Okay. And for me, what I think makes TV Gespert and Gespert Publishing unique is that we are doing the promotion with the publishing. And what I learned as a TV producer in my time as a producer, as when it was Montel Williams and mm -hmm. the other shows I produced for, was I was on the receiving end of big, big houses mm -hmm. sending us their books to promote. But they always pitched the book. Right. Yeah. It's never about the book. It's about the author. It's about the author. It's about the author. Yeah. So we literally take that stand. It's like, what does the author have to say? So your book is your plug, and that's what the real estate is going to be on the television mm -hmm. Sh mm -hmm. show. But it's you that yeah. we're really showcasing. Yeah. You know, and what is your story? What is your message? Because that helps you market. The well, book, right? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. It can be your. We could market your book. We could market your website. We could market your business. Right. Mm -hmm. Books happen to be of universal interest. Yeah. They create a legacy. They um, aggregate your expertise. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can speak to your expertise, even if there's so many books in, the, on, in that mm -hmm. area. I mean, there's so many uh, fitness books. I mean, there's like Amazon, oh like 20 something thousand fitness books. But you have your own specific expertise that nobody can take away from mm -hmm. you. But it's about the author, mm -hmm. and it's not about specifically the book. Rarely does somebody go on TV, it used to be Charlie Rose, there's no Charlie Rose, but sometimes Charlie Rose would do a book interview. Mm -hmm. But those are usually with high profile people yes. who you're interested yeah. in anyway. Right. The rest of us you tune in for yes, the for the exactly. for the author, the guest, who that exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. The second part is, oh, they wrote a book. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And even well produced TV shows where they're having the uh, the author on and the um, about the book, they still throw in really entertaining nuggets mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily scripted specifically from the book itself. Right, right. So, you know, I'm always getting authors to shift the focus off of, <laughs> I'm getting authors, spatial awareness, mm -hmm. um, authors to shift the focus off of their, um, what's in their book. Yes. And get them to tell their story, right, you know. Right. Or talk about a story that's going on. We published a book. Um, last spring by um, Dr. Gayani De Silva. Mm -hmm. She's uh, a Laguna, Laguna child psychiatrist and okay. her book is um, uh, helping reach parents, uh, parents reach their depressed tweens. Mm. That's, because that's a, there's yeah. a, a Go, population. Goes to what we said yeah, earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we plug her book, but we're all, we talk, really what we're talking about is what's going on right now in the news. Absolutely. So that's how her book fits into that Got narrative. It. And wow. that's, that's how authors need to think about their promotion, whether with us or right. with, it, with uh, others. I want to go to something you said just a moment ago. Should people be worried that many people have written a book on that topic? Right. You know, I don't think is so. That, you know, yeah. say, oh, so many people have done a book about that subject matter. So, I mean, book writing has been around for years. My thought is, it's going to be there. It's been around. There's no Nobody way to find something that someone hasn't talked your story. about. Unless you want to say, I'm going to just talk about lights in an office and just break it down. I mean, you have to find something silly almost. But is it okay to have well, another like book? How many of the coffee, different coffee shops are there now? You oh, my know? God. <laughs> We, we gravitate to the coffee shops yeah. that we like, at the places that we like, and it's not the same for everybody. So each person, you're a unique person, you're the one and only you. Yeah. So your story is unique to yourself, yeah. and just tell it in your way. Yeah. Is that kind of how their attitude yeah, should be? Yeah, ex exactly. And we look for what the news hook is, what the angles. This is why also at TV Guestbert we can represent a couple different people in the same field. Mm -hmm. So uh, what that looks like for us is we'll, we might have a variety of relationship experts. Right. One could be a psychologist, one could be a therapist, one could be a life coach, okay. one could be an author. 
So, but their take is always going to be different. Yeah. So when a producer will say to us in a generic way, we just need a relationship expert on such and such a topic, and whether, you know, uh, we'll just say Melania Trump is um, happy mm -hmm. in her role, we will send it out to all of our experts and we ask them for speaking points. Mm -hmm. Give us your point of view on this topic. Right. And then we present that to the producer and the producer can decide which angle they want from the expert. So even though it looks like they're competing, they're not because their expertise and their point of view is going to be completely different right. or unique. Right. And but it, it. but they but a lot of them can. This is why that on that on camera training exercise yeah. Yeah. we do one singular topic of mm -hmm. newsworthy importance for everybody because everybody has their, their own, own point of view. Their own way yeah, and the way that we respond at TV Guestbert with all of our experts to big breaking news stories is that we ask to have spatial awareness. I know, sorry for the sounds <laughs> around us, everybody. But um, <laughs> um, we will ask them to, every, we, we, like 90% of our clients can respond to any breaking story from their own perspective. That's, yeah. Everybody. And it's not, we're not looking for just an opinion, we're looking for an educated opinion. Yes. And even that can, yeah. most of them can do that. Mm -hmm. Most of them can do that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, I look at how many say. cookbooks. That's my go-to. Yeah. How many cookbooks are there out like there? Like how many recipes can how you possibly How many recipes be? can you talk about? I mean, they're just some things that the topic is going to be done over and over and over, but people are still buying them. Yeah. People are still intrigued by it. So it's not about, it's just about what they're going to receive. Yes. Then how many times they've received it. Yes. You can get them to, you have to be creative and make them receive it in a way that makes it exciting. Yeah. I, I would think. That's, yeah. that's my thought. I'm not the writing expert, but I'm. That's my take, right? You are an expert. <laughs> you are an expert. <laughs> On just getting things done. Yes, you know, yes, send her some love. Getting things done. You know? <laughs> Let's see some love. Can I get a heart? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But I do. I personally want to write a book about. I have a few things. One is going to be on my, my life story. Uh, fascinating. Um, I already have my titles and Great. stuff ready, and um, I can't. I can't really say what some of them are, though. I got of course, uh, of course. <laughs> but you know, off off camera. But we once can you kinda start promoting it, it as an upcoming author, it becomes yours. Like mm -hmm. so. That's the other thing that we say that right. we, you don't have to wait till it comes out. Mm -hmm. If you're like in the process of the writing it, yes. you can start being the up upcoming author. That's the way you can take ownership of it. I'm an upcoming author, everybody, because I've already started writing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two books. But um, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to doing that. And then one is, I can only tell it because it's my life. Everybody can only tell their own life story the way, but their mother, parent, family can. I guess other people can that have been around you. Um, and then the others, other people could tell. But I'm not intimidated by that because I know I've lived or experienced or witnessed certain things that I can only tell it my way. Yes. And that's kind of how I look at it. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, but is, is it a time crunch though? Do you want to hurry up and get it out before someone else does? You know, do you want to be the first or well, Early I always feel like if it's alive inside of you, you need to express it so and give it birth. The, that's yeah. the urgency, if it's, not yeah, it's to not rush a, before yeah. someone else. But if it's alive inside of you, like you've got to give it life. Out. You've got to give it life. Books change your life. Books, mm. every time I've written a book, every time I've supported someone writing a book, every time we've published a book, their life changes. Mm. It expands. They connect with people that they would never have found otherwise. Mm. Um, their life just, it, it's like, it's like they're writing into a story and it's either a release of some sort or it's a pivot, hmm. a life pivot. Do you think it's also the it's an reaction alchemy. Oh, totally. from people that they're getting that makes them go, ah, they're interested totally. or that they like what I'm saying? Do you think, you know? I mean, our, our experts have gone through like marriages, move it, moves, life uh, career changes, geographic changes, mm -hmm. uh, success shuffles, like like just big things. Yeah. And it's not, it, I don't know if it's just specifically the book itself or it's the experience of putting something of yourself yeah. out there that yeah. is so significant. Because it, writing is so powerful. It really is. It's intimidating. It's very intimidating. Yes. That's why you can do the Guestbert web Publishing it's, Webinar next week with us. And it, won't, it will be much less intimidating yes. when you go through that process. Well, if you break it down, break it down, break it down, and then we mastermind it with the group. So you come back every week mm -hmm. with what you're working on and get feedback. And the reason the feedback's important, because after the title, um, Get Out of Your Own Way, was already used by somebody, mm -hmm. we went with uh, spiritual marketing. Yeah. Allowing the universe to be your business partner, and I thought, oh my God, that this sounds, is great! Yeah, right, so. and I'm on the cover, and I'm in the Namaste position. Aww, look right. at this. <laughs> so we took it to our sales reps, and they're like, they were so confused. They're like, are you promoting a book for churches to raise <laughs> congregations? Are you praying for marketing? Yes. What are you doing? <laughs> it was 
They like they got such a different yeah. message than what well, I was putting out there. Right yeah. Here. And I was like, huh? What? What? Oh, you know, you don't get it? it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So we reshot the cover again. Oh, and then they suggested we call it heartfelt marketing. And I was like, that sounds so heartfelt. soft. Yeah. And I was like, that's soft. Yeah. But they were right. The book did much better and <laughs> spiritual marketing was the title at the time and it was very confusing at that time. I don't know if it would be right now. Yeah. Um, but it was that's so that was the progression hey. of the title. So people's perceptions and feedback are really like important to our process. Is that I think it's just big <laughs> earthquake. I think it's just no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, when did you publish your first book? 2006. Six, yeah. Okay. And then you did the next one. How long after? Um, 2011. 11, yeah. So kind and of had a look at yeah. And we have an on-camera training book coming, a guidebook mm -hmm. coming out um, mm -hmm. this year. So it'll be my third book. That'll and then I want to do more personal and business conscious books yeah. is where and I want to go. And then you do articles yeah, and stuff like that. Lots of that. Lots yeah, of articles yeah, and all you. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, writing articles. So. And then writing other people's books. You write other people's yeah. books. How many do you work on at one time? Um, we have a system down and usually so when we ghost write, we actually, I use a team. Okay. So it's not me specifically, even though I read everything mm -hmm. and then I like get in and write. Okay. I have a, like a lead ghost writer mm -hmm. on it who's getting the 40,000 words of vomit together. We'd like yeah. to start with 60,000 because then yeah, we edit that's, out 20,000. That's the 20, tedious process mm -hmm. And you have to figure out what the story is and, the, and you have to get the author's voice and what's the narrative. Right. You know, there are, you know, because I come from talk shows, producing talk shows, mm -hmm. I know how to write scripts. Okay. So the way we actually write our books is mm -hmm. not much different than the way we would apply a script. Mm -hmm. What's the tease in? Yeah. What's your opening act? Yeah, what's your beginning, middle, end, what's your tease out, what's going to get you to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. So we, I kind of use that formula nice. in, our, in our overall writing. Okay. Um, so it's from all those years of tedious <laughs> script writing, or anything, yeah. why am I doing this? Well, to get you where you yeah, are today. And, and that it, ha it's not how it happens. All, that you, all your yeah. experiences you've pulled together, and yeah. it's, I'm sure you're utilizing all those experiences and skills over the years to yeah. what you're doing now. Yeah. So you have all these ghostwriters and they come in and ghostwriters, editors, copy editors, yeah. This. I, I think I'm on different stages. You have a big yeah. team. And so do you have a number? Like do you at some point say, okay, we're kind of we've got enough oh. or do you always make room for other Oh no we we pretty much make room. Yeah. yeah. Um I think for me if we're taking somebody on as an actual client author, as a guest for, uh, mm -hmm. publishing author, what I do look for is their ability to do this. What you're, you're doing? Are they Commit to camera it. friendly? Are they, you know, are they teachable? Because everybody needs to be mm -hmm. teachable to some level Absolutely. in order to work with them. Um, and do they? Are they contemporary enough in messaging? Mm -hmm. Like, are we? Will we be able to? Because for me, messaging is like I'm going to give you a surfboard, and you got to go out there and catch a wave. Okay. And you know, <laughs> catch another wave, and that's content. That's mm -hmm. how content goes. It just you, you can't you can't cling to one wave. Right. So if I have a client that's got a really good message, a great story that's promotable, mm -hmm. that will be successful on their behalf for yeah. them, then it's that's the type of, uh, okay. uh, yeah, you know, yeah. so that's where the discernment is. is that I have to have enough opportunity to be able to make a match. Right. If we can't, yeah. if we don't have the opportunity, then it's probably yeah. not the right. Yeah, you don't yeah. accept everybody. Yeah. It has to work. Yeah, yeah. I get it because some people too don't want to be told what to do with their project, which is their baby, yeah. their story, and yeah. they come and then you want to make changes or tell them how to do it and. If they're not willing to bend on some of that, it, too much resistance wouldn't work for you. We've also had it where a couple, um, we've ghost written, written a couple books that we've loved. Mm. We were so excited about, but the author wasn't ready to go out with it. Oh. They went through the whole experience, oh got goodness. the book, got it on paper, and they were like, yeah, I'm not ready to tell that story. Oh. And they shelved it. Wow. Yeah. So it was a it was a big lesson. It's been a lesson for us not to be too invested mm. in the outcome either. It was almost okay. like they went through a process of something that gave them a realization of something that they just they weren't ready. They weren't ready, or didn't they because realized once it's out there, once it's everybody out there, knows, yeah. and they weren't ready to reveal yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, also about getting out of your own way. When we mm. when we're able to write a book, we we had a autobiography, and the person was telling stories about s family members. And just because we're dealing with written language, you know, we would go back and we'd be like, you know, can we say it this way instead? Mm -hmm. You know, just because we're the reader at that moment in the editing and we're like, you know, you just want to neutralize yeah. some of the things because 
Well, as you, you know said, it goes out. It's somebody else is going to receive that. You yeah. can't take it back. You don't want unnecessary drama yeah. either. Yes, even if it you know. was drama. And, but it could be a bestseller yeah. from the drama right. too. So there's you, a fine line. The fine you line. The right it's kind of drama. That's maybe. exactly it. Yeah, that's okay. exactly. It. And I think it all depends also on the author's perspective. Mm -hmm. Like where do how are where's the author with this? Yeah. In this one particular situation, I'm thinking of where we needed to neutralize some of the context. It was because the author had no idea what they were setting themselves up for. They weren't choosing. Like right. it was almost like they were blindly they didn't walking into. Yeah, how what that was, how explosive that was going that to could be. be. Yes, got it. So that yeah. is also why a self-published um, book mm -hmm. doesn't get the same attention as a published book mm -hmm. because it's not. You know, it's uh, you know. I always say for us, a ghost writing, uh, writing a book, and even my own book, my own book, get on TV and heartfelt marketing. I was a team. You know, I wrote it. Mm -hmm. I had editors. I had copy editors. Mm -hmm. I had a literary agent who mm -hmm. wrote it. You know. So it does require a lot of um, hands in the spaghetti yeah. to make I a good meal. I think it's good though. Isn't it? I, I always like, you know, input. I, I would, you know, love I have creative a bunch input. Of people get, I love input. I love positive criticism, <laughs> you know, meaning I could, it, it might hurt, but it's going to make me better. Um, and it's delivered in a caring way. Can you give us more of a teaser about what you're going to tell in your book? Ah. Well, definitely growing up um, around um, from Detroit to Beverly Hills, that in itself is that a story. Itself. I mean, you know, a kid traveling um, at a young age from Detroit coming and growing up in Beverly Hills and what I experienced um, through that process, how it changed my life, you know, where could I, you know, been if I would stayed in Detroit versus here yeah. and, um, and then what I went through. Growing up, wow. yeah, yeah, there were some, there were some stories. There's oh some yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. good, bad, and the ugly. But I'm here, yeah, and I'm happy, and I'm successful, and I'm blessed. So, it, it's all going to be, of course, a positive. Of course, it, it, it takes some paths. It yeah, takes some challenge. There were some personal. It's a, it's a road. Incidences and challenges that, like you just mentioned, I don't know if I want to tell. Yeah. People would love to hear, but I, I have to be ready to tell it. Yeah. So I say, you know? put it on paper, yeah. and then we'll decide. Right. Get it on paper, and in. then you decide. Right. Be Everybody has yeah. something that that they've gone through that they may kind of shove aside, and they move forward and be a great person. But there may be something that happened, or things they went through, or struggles, whatever it may be. That I think the personal identification right now mm -hmm. is so required in terms of the global healing process Absolutely. right now. People are really looking to connect, and this is a way of putting yourself out there that people can connect to, and that's identify, what I love doing. yeah, and I identify love. with. With my show, I do that. I love to inspire, educate, motivate my audience, yeah. and entertain. And that's a that's gift, such I a beautiful say. gift to give. You know? Because if they don't leave with anything beyond just having a good time for 30 minutes or so, and then they leave and they're off to something else and don't have to think back about it, then I haven't done my job right. You know, mm -hmm. I haven't done what my heart is telling me to do. I want them to leave and think about it and say they've implemented some of the lessons learned or ideas you've shared and that I've shared, recommendations. Um, I don't care if it's just telling you how to stay safe, which is I was going to talk about it, but I didn't, but how to you know, not get sick on an airplane. I mean, just whatever it may be. It may sound little. You can Google it, but that's why they're life coaches. They, yeah. That's why they're trainers. You could do all that yourself, too, but it takes kind of hearing things, little messages. Yeah. And that's what I love doing. So, yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. It's fun. So that, that in itself could be a book, right? <laughs> it is. You know, motivating, inspiring others yeah. and how to go about that. Because if I can inspire someone else to inspire others. Yeah. What a, what a wonderful world we will have. <laughs> it's all in positive, though. Yeah. Too many people are breaking each other down and fighting, competing and not wanting to help because, Ooh. oh, I mean, I didn't even, you know, I found out and you did all, all the different things you did, but you've been a television, I'm, I'm learning continually more and more and that you taught, you know, television hosts and you get guests. I mean, I didn't know all that initially when I asked for you to be on the show. So it was just all other stuff. I was like, oh, wow, how funny, look at that. But I love it. I think yeah. it's great, you know? I think all that's wonderful stuff, you know? There's room for everybody in the world to do what they're doing in their lane and I think everybody should be helpful no matter where you are. Yeah, you thank know? you. No one got anywhere in life without someone 
giving them advice or helping them absolutely, get there. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure you saw that oh, working absolutely. on all the shows. Yeah. Now we have a little connection with Donny Osmond. Oh, I love that. Tell me, right? tell me, Mine tell isn't me. personal, but they're my father who wrote Love Me For A Reason for the oh, Osmonds. I love that. That's right. He wrote the song Love Me For A Reason, which is one of their big hits. Yeah. And then you worked on one of the shows. Yes, for him, right? that's where my Emmy Donnie nominations are from. Oh, for Donnie and Marie. Yeah, for Donnie and Marie uh, when Sony did it, not the original Donnie yeah. and Marie because I was too little. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, and, how, how old um, was I during Donnie and <laughs> Marie? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then Donnie did the forward for my first book, Get on TV. Oh, nice. Yeah. So oh, that's great. That's really, that is a that's great fun. connection. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, I always have wanted to interview them just to talk about that period yeah. of their career and their recollection and what it was like working with my dad and what they Donnie, remember. Donnie, do her show. Donnie, Donnie, do her show. Johnny Bristol worked with you. <laughs> yeah, I love so, that. So, yeah, I thought it would be fun just to hear that of, of him, and I'm doing it with some others. So just to hear those stories. Oh, that's because, great. Because, as you know, stories are powerful. Stories have meaning. Stories help impact people's life so and I love that you have legacy like you have you know um, entertainment industry legacy yeah. that, that's what brought Jersey girl me <laughs> out here was uh, you know was that you know nice. growing up watching all of that like I wanted to be, be like, a part of it yeah take me there I want to be a part of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wonderful well yeah I didn't have a choice I was little and we moved here and, and my mom was in the industry and my family so just kind of grew up around it you know like Whatever your whatever. parent does is what yeah. they do, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, this one's around, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you later find out. Yeah, you're oh, like, oh, oh, that's important to people. Yeah. People, <laughs> people like that. Stuff, in that. Right? That's I always, a big deal. Yeah, that's, I, always, I always like that's the do like that's the child of a celebrity story. Yeah, you that's know? exactly what yeah. it is. You just kind of that's like, the norm. What? It's the yeah. norm, no matter if your father's a dentist or a contractor yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's just what they you do. Know. It's Everybody what they does do. something. We're all people in the end. Yep. Just some some careers are more exciting than others, yeah. or more focused on by the public. Yeah. So that's all great. That's great. So have we gone through um, publishing before publishing. we go? I want people to understand because people always say, "What does it really mean to publish?" This, you know it. It seems so, so yeah. Logical, so the, the the biggest thing is that you have access to um, self publishing. You know, create a sp create space on Amazon is probably the most popular self publishing. Mm -hmm. um, when Amazon self publishes a book, they're basically giving you a web page on their product right. site. So you have to, you're responsible for doing the drive to it. Okay. In a traditional publisher, they are um, yeah, it's still a web page, but they're they're working also with Amazon as a wholesaler of books. Okay. So it, you know, so where it's a product that goes into their warehouses, that goes up onto their website, that goes into bookstores across the country. It's mm -hmm. a, it's it's like put it's a difference between putting a product in all stores across the country versus you just doing one 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 front storefront, yeah. yeah. So, and then the other issue is the marketing, the self vetting piece. Mm -hmm. When you have a published book, of course, it's vetted. Right. Um, other people can find it. Mm -hmm. It's um, important. It's just it's just you know one of the reasons you write a book is also for the credibility. It's like this is who yeah. I am. This when is you get what that I title, do. author. Yeah. Yeah, something so about that. Makes, it really it is because you. we work with experts mm -hmm. in professional business owners, and that becomes it does become really important. I right. mean, we're building their media platform, we're getting them noticed, uh, we're helping them build their businesses, or take them to a pivot or a new a new level. Mm -hmm. That that's really becomes important to have that. That's key. You got yeah, it. everybody wants to be published. That's the you know that's it why is. I ask about yeah. it because it's something that always people, I want to write, I want to do this, but I want I got to be a published yes. author. Just because you write means one thing, but if you're published, it's that stamp of approval. You know, um, even when oh I my gosh. Hey, Sam, this is totally you? live TV, Hi. everybody. We have a little. <laughs> yeah, come on. Hi, to cutie. Sam. We've, so, that's okay. okay. Somebody's <laughs> now a star. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Hey, we're live TV out here <laughs> at the office here. Anybody, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so, yeah. So when you do, so when you receive it, and I want to make sure I'm understanding myself even because I know about music publishing, right? Um, and you handle the publishing for everyone that you. No, we actually well, not. a lot of our clients. We no, it's actually just optional. Um, some of our clients self-publish. Okay. We still promote them. Mm -hmm. Some of our clients are published by bigger publishing houses than us. We mm -hmm. still, pro you know, we'll so promote them. So you help them write yeah. the book, and then do you you help them and get? And sometimes big publishers hire us to promote their authors. Fantastic. That's. Mm. 
That's, that's a compliment. A, that's a, yes, yeah. that really is. Yeah, so it's a, the best compliment. We don't, you know, no credit. We just, like I say, we just, we're just mm -hmm. doing the heavy lifting. Right. We just send it to back to the marketing department. Yeah. Um, that's but great. that's, but we, so we work on every level. Okay, My goal wonderful. is just helping people get their message out there and their platform out there. So that's when, that's your job done. Yeah, that's my job Good. done. And we'll, I'll work out with you at any level. I'll show you what your options are. That's wonderful. I'll teach you how to do it yourself if you want to do mm -hmm. that way. That's why we do the webinars I love and, the, it. and the workshops. And if not, you can pay us. We'll do it all. I love you it. You're so flexible. It? Yeah, it's really You're so is. flexible. Yeah. And you well, because it allows us to work with the most people to be flexible. Right. Like that. Uh, yeah, because you're doing so many different elements. And yeah. Some want to go through the whole process with you and yep. others may just want a little bit. Yeah. But you're happy to do it all. I mean, I've had people dip in for 10 years with us. Mm. They come in, they just take this piece, they come in and take okay. this piece, they come in and take this piece, they come in and take this piece, they show us what they've done, they show us what they've done, mm -hmm. and it works for them, and, and that's it, great. And that's yeah. what they need. They yeah. got what they need, and yeah. that's the satisfaction of your company totally. is that you help someone yeah. take it out there. And then when you see the book done, you had a part of that. Love it. I know. Isn't yeah. that great? I love it. I love it. Well, hey, maybe I'll have to be one of your next clients in that I area, you know? We'll, be a great we'll do, one. We'll do some off-camera talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the distribution process, of course. Yes. Do you, do you get them? We do all that. That's get, all of us. You get all that marketing yep. and distribution. Part. That's it. We, that, that's why I, I say you. when we... And when the book we, tour? Do you get yeah, stay we do with it them all. through all that? We, we do all of it. You help them? Yeah, we put you in the bookstores, get the book signings, this, get when, the publishing, we will do the TED Talks, yeah. we do it all. Get okay. you the speaking engagements. That's when what Jackie a lot of people says do. says one stop shop, she means one stop shop. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people say that and then later, oh, well, I, well of course not that. Or no, you literally, we literally from are. A to Z, yeah. nothing left unturned. Yeah. And she's there cheerleading and at your book signing parties too. We, we, <laughs> we love it. Like, we, the, the emotional satisfaction we get yeah. from the successes of our clients right. is just like, right. we're like, if we just did it, you know, like it's like <laughs> touchdown. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's as great as the financial success, but right. we're really emotionally satisfied yeah. by what we do. You know, yeah. when our clients have big wins, right. and we got to be a part of it and and get that out of there. And also, we have you know our client bases. We have a um, a large retainer rate, um, not fees rate, but the clients stay with us seven that's, years, eight years. That says a lot. Years. Exactly that says because a lot. they we grow with them. They it's grow the biggest with compliment. Us. Yes, and people yes. want to stay with you. Yeah. Right. Because they're busy. Every, what we've done has built out what they wanted. Right. One thing we didn't tap on, and we're about to round out everybody, we're closing out soon, is um, making money. Everybody thinks, oh, if I oh. read a book, I'm successful. Yes. I'm, what is it to be a New York bestseller? What does that mean? And then how much money can you really make? Great question. So I'll just speak from my own experience. Mm -hmm. From my um, book that I'm published by Sourcebooks, Get on TV, and I had my literary agent. Mm -hmm. And that book's been out 10 years, still sells. Mm -hmm. I've never made any money. I did get an advance, but I didn't make any back-end money. Our mm -hmm. business model is, in all books, our business model is we do a 50-50 net split. Mm -hmm. And when I do tra we do transparent accounting at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We're small enough and we're agile enough to track a book in the marketplace. So I could see how well you're doing here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. if I need to okay. do more media to push your book in Nashville. But all yeah. books go on consignment. So as your publisher, mm -hmm. I'm putting, I'm floating the money for those books in the physical national marketplace. So they go to the bookstores. And they don't count as a sale until a customer, a retail customer, buys it. Okay. So if retail the customer, okay. Yeah. So if the store mm -hmm. decides to return it, I have to buy my own book back. Mm. And I pay for the shipping. So I could, I'm oh, now goodness. paying, yeah, I'm paying tw twice oh, no. and three shippings on one book. Ah. So I have to be really smart yeah. to who I publish right. and who my partner is. I mean, you're my exactly. client, but to me, I see you as a partner That's because yeah. it, I got to be successful. You're both successful. And then even after the contract that you have with us is complete, and we sell product in the marketplace, I want you to be happy and still participate in selling yeah. that book right. because it's still working. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have one, uh, one of our parenting books is doing so well and it's been out like 10 years. It hasn't been a registered guest for mm -hmm. probably seven, okay. but we're still, he, the book is still trafficking where he still does what he needs to do when it was mm -hmm. required and that to me is a win, winning re relationship. Absolutely. My New York Times bestseller, um, that we pr that we published, she got a huge commission check that paid for her whole entire account with us. Mm -hmm. um, those you don't really see, and honestly, if you ask people who have published books if they've ever gotten a residual check, they probably would tell you no. Mm -hmm. We do track um, and we do uh, pay out our, our our authors, so I'm very proud of that as having been a published author. Yeah. And um, but I, I feel like it's like it, you, it, it's exciting it, to me. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. But you don't make your money necessarily back on your book. 
you have to look at your book as an investment, like a business card, like mm -hmm. you're passing out business cards, that you're yes. getting credibility, and then it comes in different ways. So for some of our authors, one of our authors, she wanted to be an international best-selling speaker, and mm -hmm. she became one. Mm -hmm. And she shared the, you know, the platform with Sharon And she Robbins. can talk about her book, and it, she can sell her book. And she's still it's selling her book. So now she has a regular spot on an um, Austin television affiliate where she lives. Regular spot, so she's still selling books. Yeah. That's one way it came in. Um, our New York Times best-selling author also became a, a five-figure paid speaker. She has a multi-million dollar business now. Yeah. Like It just comes in through, that's what I mean. It's I like you, it, yeah. the wins for the lottery ticket for the book are really huge. Mm -hmm. And then your particular genre, because you're celebrity, um, celebrity um, legacy books do really well, and they especially do really well in this town, but they do really, really well. Um, even celebrity assistant books <laughs> do right, really well. They, like, yeah, it's like, you know tell I mean? me yeah. so, the secrets. Uh, yeah, exactly. So those are, um, there's always That's a That's why I don't desire. have an assistant right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, because they want to tell you your secrets. They may come out with a book later telling stuff. No. Yeah, they'll tell you your secrets. <laughs> so that's, yeah. it, but those, that's, no, so that's those are always a No, that's great. That's need. great information. That's a really, really, really good, good information. Because yeah. people always want to know that. They think, and, oh, I've got a best-selling book. They must have made millions of dollars. And if we were promoting you, we would get you out with the MTV Music Awards. We'd get you out with the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Just your name and your story itself mm -hmm. puts you as a red carpet music industry mm -hmm. commentator. Mm -hmm. And that's how we would work to promote Got the book it. in one aspect of mm -hmm. it. The other aspect, we would also promote your real estate business because what you mm -hmm. did and what you learned through that process Absolutely. made you the businesswoman that you are. You're right, yeah. And then we would also tie it into parenting because you have very specific ways of parenting right. that other people can use. So there's are three different ways we would go off right. in terms of promoting yeah. you. Yeah there's, yeah, there's stories within the story. Yeah. And it's not Many just about stories the book. within the story. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was started with when I, we started speaking. Yeah, and yeah, I, I went around. There's just so many things I want to keep asking. I'm I tell you, it's just so I'm wonderful. Interesting. I'm glad she thinks I'm no, interesting. No, it's so many great things. It makes me think of something else and something else because you know my big fight has been writing a book, but then within that, I'm like, there's so many sub stories that could be their own story. So do you tell it all and then break them down, or do you great withhold, question. like you said, don't withhold? So it's a great question. Know. Okay, we're gonna. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. I first start writing anyway. Just write all those write stories it. down. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it will reveal itself, and you, and then you will get to the point where you don't want to tell this, or this doesn't really matter here. Like we worked on um, a ghostwriting series, and it became three books for that. And you'll exact be able to identify yeah. this right here. Yeah, let's pull this out and totally. save that for another book. And this totally. right here, can, okay, totally. Yeah, I get we're it. We're like, Oop, we just we just went down a made yeah. a right turn. But that's a gem to you. Yeah, that because you if someone book. brings you all of their stories, and then within it, and you look at it, and you say, I see ten books yeah. right here, and that person's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> you do? Yeah, that's that, that's that's the dream. I think. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I hope this is, has helped everybody else. I so Have we gone the through the process, yeah, you think? We've think told everybody so. all they need to know. We got our publishing webinar next Thursday and our on-camera training next Saturday, the 31st. Okay, and how can they, they it's get involved? It's desperatepublishing.com and it's tvoncameratraining.com. Sounds yeah. good. You guys okay. got the information. If you want to write a book, if you know someone that has a good story to tell and you're trying to encourage them to get that story out, share this video with them and tell them, hey, look at this. And here's someone over here. Jackie Jordan can help guide them along every aspect from A to Z. I think that's so exciting and Thank wonderful. You. I, I, I love meeting Thank you today you so and talking with you. We can go on and on, which we will do after we get off camera. <laughs> And, um, and and enjoy and everyone be safe in Los Angeles that's in the rain on the East Coast there's some you know bad weather going on as well just be safe and be kind to others spread love and kindness and make somebody smile today you've been watching Carla Don live I'll see you next Wednesday at 530 Pacific Standard Time all right yay let's go on over here for a moment <laughs> we'll walk over here bye <laughs>